I've been wanting to make a perfect handle pokey thing for a while, but I couldn't bring myself to ruin a savable screwdriver. The previous owner of this one has already modified the tip, so I think it's a good candidate for a pokey thing. This is also a good opportunity for me to practice surgically removing wood scales. In the past I've just torn off the scales not wanting to keep them. I want to practice taking these off and using them over. Now know something about the pins. This pin looks like it was driven in this way. See how you can see most of the head of the pin? And here the wood is sort of healed over it. Now this pin looks like it was driven in the opposite way. See it looks like that's the head of the pin. See how the wood is like swollen over it there? So I think I'm going to try to drive that pin out this way. I'm going to drive this pin out this way. And do my best to save the scales. I use this end mill looking bit in my Dremel to very carefully remove the wood around the heads of the pins. So on this side I removed it here and on this side I removed it around there. That way when I drive the pin this way I'm hoping then it won't pull any wood and splinter. That's the plan anyway. Now I'm going to put the head of the pin over a hole in this block. Now I have a small punch that just fits the pin and a really small hammer. A love tap, see what's happening. Is anything happening? Nothing so far. Give it a couple more love taps. Anything? I don't think it moved. Let me try the other. Let me try the other pin. Move it. Now I think that one started moving. Okay, that one's moving. See? Now I'm just going to keep lightly tapping and checking and make sure I'm not splitting any wood and see if I can't get both of these to get out. That top pin fought me pretty good, but I got it out. And the wood is in pretty good shape. I had a little bit of pull out right there. That one's not too bad. This side fared a little worse. A little bit of, little bit of damage there. And it, there's definitely a crack that runs through this. If you can see that. See it on the back? You can see it on the back real good. There's a, definitely a crack. The metal the metal's corroded. Looks like there's some markings on this side. Once I clean it up, we'll we'll take a good look at those. I'm hoping I can use the pins over again too. All right, here it is after wire wheeling. 
the uh, the markings are on this side. Looks like a 15 right there, and this symbol. I don't know if that's the right way to look at it. I mean, if you look at it this way, it looks like it looks like a guy with a little mustache and thick eyebrows. So I don't know. I don't know if you're supposed to look at it that way. Although then the 15 is upside down. Or if you're supposed to look at it that way. Not sure what it is. Alright, my next step is to reshape this tip into a pokey thing. Sand this whole outside. I'm going to reshape this this butt section to be rounded. Since we're making a making our own tool, I, I feel better if that was rounded. It feels like it digs into you a little bit, being squared off like that. So I'm going to round that off. I think I'm going to start with my super aggressive belt, my 1x30 sander. We're in the colder, drier months now, and it's way less humid in my basement shop, so I have to wear my anti-shock bracelet when using my sander. Here it is after the 40 grit belt. I got the tip pretty much roughed in. Sand all the rust off. And I reshaped the butt end here to be round. That's starting to look pretty good. It feels better in the hand like that. All right. Now I'm going to move on to a 120 grit belt. Here's the pokey thing after the 120 grit. Looking pretty good. This this area in here is always tricky to get on the belt sander. This slight curve in here. I think I'm going to go over that with the little sanding drums in my Dremel just to smooth it out a little better. Those little sanding drums in my Dremel did a nice job on this area right here. Came out good. I think my next step is my conditioning belts in my 1x30. The coarse brown conditioning belt did a really nice job smoothing out all the all the sanding marks. Here's the pokey thing after the medium conditioning belt. I don't think I'm going to go any further at this point. I'm going to have some sanding to do when I fit the scales. And then I'll, I'll finish the metal up after that. I'm going to give the scales a bath in some soapy water. See how much of this comes off just with scrubbing. Here's the scales after their bath. 
they don't look great. I figured I'd give this stuff another try. I mixed six parts hot water with one part of the, the acid. I don't know if it's going to help, but I figure it can't hurt. I'm going to put a coat on, let it dry, and then put another coat on, let it dry, and then uh, we'll neutralize it with some baking soda and water. See if they look any better. Alright, here's the wood scales after two coats of the oxalic acid. I, I think they look a lot better. I have uh, water with baking soda in it to neutralize the acid. A lot of times you get some foaming action. Let me see. Yeah, it's foaming. That's fun. Let's see if this one foams. Not as much. Oh well. Next step is to rinse these off with water, let them dry. Instead of trying to reuse these steel pins, I think I'm going to go for brass pins. It's going to require me drilling out just slightly the holes. This is eighth inch brass. I don't know what size this is, but this doesn't quite fit. So I'll drill out all the holes. I added some walnut sawdust to the 30 minute epoxy to help me fill in any gaps when gluing the scales. Here it is all glued together. I'm going to try to very carefully sand these pins flush with my 1x30 and then hand sand the wood. I sanded the wood down to 320 the metal down to 600 and then I used the maroon and the gray scotch bright so the metal's ready for polishing and the wood would be ready for finishing except I got a little crack right there I want to fill I'm gonna work on that next I saved some of the dust while I was sanding I'm gonna mix it with this wood glue to make a, a putty to fill that crack. My homemade wood putty is dry. I just have to sand it flush. Then I'll be ready to apply a finish. I started out with this rusty, user-modified, perfect handle screwdriver. And here it is, resto-modded into a perfect handle pokey thing. I went with my Bombay Mahogany poly shades on the scales.
And of course, Chuck and I used our favorite stuff on the metal. Chuck and I noticed our container of flits is starting to separate. Hope you can see that sort of yellow colored fluid on top. I asked the folks who flits about it. They said that's normal. Just give it a stir like you would stir paint. I think those brass pins look good in there. This back section here came out nice. That feels that feels really good in the hand. See how that fits in the palm of the hand nice? That feels good. I like that. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Chuck was especially happy with how this project turned out. So I decided to make him his own pokey thing to add to his toolbox. I plan to surprise him with this as a Christmas present, so don't tell him about it. <laughs>